It's a crucial part of our lives because we, we utilize the sport to know about ourselves, to grow, but we are more than that. <laughs> This does not look great. But if this is a significant injury, you got to think at his age, that's pretty much it, right? This certainly is a blow to his international aspirations. Yes, absolutely. I always been a believer of like everything happens for a reason first. And then secondly, like, yeah, nothing happens in your life that you cannot overcome it. What is it that is in, in your heart that tells you, I'm going to do the work. I, I want to come back and I still want to play. This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs, the playbook in the greatest stadium ever created on earth. And I've been to most of them. It's SoFi Stadium here in Inglewood. And I got a hometown hero. He's a little bit knocked up, but that's okay. Javier Chitarito Hernandez, welcome to SoFi. <laughs> thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you very much. It's a, a complete press, pleasure and privilege to be here, honestly. Thank you. Well, it's such a pleasure to have you because this is about your playbook to success. And I think it's very timely that you're here with an injury yeah. uh, because you've done so much in your career yeah. uh, at home in Mexico, in America, a man, you around the world in the Premier League. I think still the highest, uh, the most goals scored by a Mexican in Premier League. Is that yes, still true? true? Right. Amazing. Yeah. Um, but no matter who you are, and we saw this with Tom Brady, exactly. no matter who you are, we all have challenges. I tell people all the time is blessed that I am. Yeah. Obviously, I've had my past challenges, yeah. <laughs> but every day I get kicked in the face about on average eight times. Yep. And I think true heroes still show character when they have when they're kicked in the face, when things aren't going well. It's a lot easier for people to identify. Yep. What's your mindset when you get an injury or things don't go personally yeah. as planned? Oh man, it's still it's still very fresh. I'm still processing it to be completely honest because this happened four or five days ago. You I, know, know, I can't believe you're here. I'm exactly. like, oh, he's gonna cancel. We gotta, we gotta <laughs> no. find someone else to be no, on the I podcast. No, I just I just make sure to Jake like, hey man, this because I don't know the surgery time, right? So yeah. if he was gonna be in those in these days, but thankfully it's gonna be like next week anyway. But David, I mean, I always been a believer of like everything happens for a reason first, and then secondly, like. Yeah, nothing happens in your life that you cannot overcome it, like overcome from it. Nothing. So it's it's part of the journey. You know, it's part of 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 challenging yourself to know yourself because if these things didn't happen, if the obstacles as you say, if life didn't kick you in your face, there will there will not be a story, you know? There will not be the lessons, you know, because I always I always speak with my my whole family that thankfully they've been involved in this sport and they helped me so much to teach me not only the inside job that you have to do as an athlete, but the outside, that is the most important one. That I think that's where a lot of, of athletes cannot achieve everything that they want to achieve because they think it's about talent, it's about, uh, yeah, physicality, it's about just the sport and it's about the mental and the heart that I call this, these two things that they are the ones that, yeah, they're the, they're the ones that are gonna help me recover from this ACL, you know, it's, it's like the most terrifying injury for an athlete, almost a part of the fractures and other ones. So yeah, man, I'm 35. The narrative, it's very like very negative towards because you're an athlete. It, this happens when you are older, you know, this is not happening when I'm 21, 22 right. years old. So man, my mindset is that I'm capable of doing this. I'm not gonna run away of the motions and the situations because yeah, kicking in the face, it hurts, of course, it's painful, you know, part of the, of, the, of the physical pain. But I don't run away from it, I embrace it. And at 35, and obviously I've been around a lot of athletes yeah. in my career, and in any sport, uh, 35, we question whether or not we wanna do the work that it's gonna take to come back. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, at 21, it's different because you haven't had all the successes, yeah. the accolades, the awards, <laughs> the championships yeah. that you've had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is it? that is in in your heart that tells you i'm gonna do the work i i want to come back and i still want to play cause <laughs> to be completely honest david and it, it could sound very superficial cause it's a very tough challenge and i'm very 
That's not like, superficial. Attracted to it, you know, it's because, yeah, it's because what the noise that is starting about about this is normally very, like they, they they try to scare you. That's what I said. The noise about it is like a lot of negativity, a lot of doubt. That yeah, I can hear it and I can listen it and it lives in my head, but it's it motivates me the the all the. The thing that people and society tell us that is almost impossible to achieve, that's what makes me thrive, you know? So that's why that's why I wake up and and I see the knee and I feel and I walk with those uh, things that I hate, uh, the crouches. And then I just say like, yeah, you can. And it's very challenging because these type of recoveries are tedious, are boring. Yeah. They are simple, actually, because now with technology and with everything and with with the people that I'm that I'm around and all the doctors, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. So that's the challenge: to be very consistent and to honestly put that, yeah, tedious work that sometimes we don't want to do it, David, because we love to be inside. We love we love to be in the in the arena. You know, like speaking about it, the Tom Brady, the man in the arena, right? That's yeah. what that's what we all love to be and and be in the spot. But then. When no one is watching, then when you are gonna be uh, out from from the field, even from walking, that's the word that I'm gonna put. But not only not only in the physical way and therapy way as well, in my emotions and in my mind for sure. And as Tom Brady, uh, he didn't get the respect that he wanted early on in his career. Yeah. And we all know the story yeah. how he told Mr. Kraft, "Hey, yeah. I'm the best decision you've ever made," and he was right. Yeah. Uh, your name to me is indicative of knowing that you're going to face challenges. You probably were like me, not the first guy picked when you were a little boy, yeah. uh, because we don't pick the littlest guys, yeah. uh, but it's not the size of the dog. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Exactly. Uh, do you think wow, I growing that. up little as a chicharito uh, has had an impact on you today that you still have that? I'm going to prove everybody that I have a saying judgment, is nothing but an opinion exactly. based on ignorance and yep. doubt. Yep. And when people told me I was too small to play college football and I, I wasn't as great as you, but I played, mm. right? I made it and nobody mm. thought I'd even come close. Yep. That drives me today at 55 when people say, you, you can't do this. You, you can't speak in front of millions of people. You, you can't be on Instagram. You're an old middle-aged mutant turtle. And I say to myself, that's ignorant and doubt. Nothing's gonna stop me, but it's that little boy Yep. that everybody says I couldn't do. Does that stick inside of you too? Of course, because I think a very, very philosophical, in a philosophical way, that noise from the people who doubt you, it's it's part of, of the of the self-doubt that you have, man, because we all have doubts. It's like, it's like when, when people try to teach you when I was young, for example, that don't be afraid. And when I realized it's like, no, be afraid, feel it and go through it. That's yeah. the key because People think sometimes when we are playing our sport, or you can see, for example, Tom Brady, LeBron James, any athlete, they think to reach reach to to certain level is not feeling, and it's the other way around. That's what I'm trying to to teach everyone that I don't have superpowers. That's what I that's what I'm come, when I'm talking with you. I'm pushing myself, speaking in English. It's like, man, it's not about I don't have superpowers to achieve what I achieve. What I did is I put the work that every human being can put the work in their areas that they don't want to put. That uncomfortable feeling, that uh, uh, embrace, yeah, the, the unpleasant moments, man. I always said it, even in Spanish, it's very easy for me, but uh, sometimes you need to say no to things that you don't want to say no. Sometimes you need to say yes to things that your body's telling you to know because you're afraid of, right? So. And those doubters, those narratives, they're just, uh, yeah, a reflection of the limit that the universe is putting to you. And the funny and entertaining part of this life is like, you can overcome it. It's not easy, though. That's why it's beautiful, right? If not, yeah. it would be plain, flat, boring, you know, like, because everyone can do it and everything. Can. No, that's the challenge. That's the beauty part. So that's why I always try to, 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 to speak out about, like, I'm not, I'm different, yes. But, yeah, I didn't have super talents. And, and even Tom Brady and even LeBron James, even though they're very talented in their sport, I am talented in my sport. Don't get me wrong. But I believe that, yeah, talent is just 20%, man. Because the other 80% is the one that that makes you stand out from good enough or from good to great. Yeah, I say skills and knowledge 
they're your basemen, but it's the desire that yes. creates that delta. They're fighting the dog, man. And, and you have you have that yeah. desire. Uh, another saying is, you know, if you want to be great, it's going to start with hard. If you want to be amazing, it's going to start with impossible. And so you can't be afraid yeah. to, to face the impossibilities yeah. to be an amazing person like yourself. One of the other things, I, I work with a lot of athletes. Now, years and years ago, I was a sports agent, so I worked as an agent, but I learned to work as a coach. Uh, either an entrepreneur coach, yep. speaking coach, or a mindset coach is mainly how I help athletes. But a lot of athletes have had coaches since they were five years old. And somehow as they get later on their career, they're like, well, I don't need a business coach, or I don't need a mindset coach, or I don't need a sleep coach. Um, and wow. yet you seem to be very open-minded to people helping you. In fact, I think you have several coaches. What are some of the most valuable coaches off the field? Oof. that you're utilizing today man i have a uh, i have a very i will say abundant entourage that i that i'm very lucky that we are working together because that's something that as well i've been i've been like yeah dealing with because i work with people we work together because the value is not that any my value is not more valuable than the value of someone else so that's why i always say we work together right even though that that i'm the leader of that entourage and that's not going to get a, a, a misunderstood you know as has been as a leader and you need to 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 always be uh, involved in every areas but i mean the entourage that i have is not only in the sport right i have i have a, a video analysis for example guy that helps me every single game of how i did and and they do the analysis that uh, against the teams and the and the players that I'm going to play against but then man I've been I've been yeah I've been creating an entourage of every aspect in my life mental coach I have a mental coach I have people that I work with in my social media right now that I that I that we all accept that there's a very good uh, like I said yeah like channel where you can just like do whatever you want to do yeah. right yeah I try <laughs> to use it to just show myself and then uh, just show my path. And if people feel related and something helps, I will be just more than blessed, right? And grateful. Then I have, uh, in the physical area, I have a, like, like, like the main coach that is my physio, that he's in charge of my team. But I have nutritionist. I have a meal prep guy, a woman in this case, a person. Uh, I have a, a two fitness coach. One is more uh, related from the soccer. The other one is more from my whole body. Then I have my physio that is a head physio. Then as well, I'm pushing myself a little bit. I have a stylist, you know, that people could think is very superficial. But in the way that I've been dressing, it's like I'm canalizing all the energy to do what I'm the best at it. So I don't need to waste energy and time of thinking how much I need to eat, how less I need to eat. So I'm just like canalizing everything. So I need to be focused in the things that I need to do. So that's why my mental coach is helping me to that. Uh, the social media, I need to think about it. I don't understand. start. So I start delegating that. But you know David better than me in this sense. It's like delegating and trusting in people and find the correct people and stuff. That's the beauty. That's what life is about, right? So I'm being very grateful to find the people that it's making me uh, grow in every sense. And I think... The beauty of it as well is like I I'm, I am empowering them too, you know. So it's a very nice synergy in that sense. So I always said to my sister, to everyone, if I would have known that when I was younger, I will be attached of myself and I see myself as product. Don't get me wrong, I'm a human being. Yeah. But this is the company. A brand, yeah. This is the brand. This is the company. And the way of reinvesting in some other stuff. I need to reinvest it in myself with that interest that right now I started doing it when I was 32 years old. If I would have done it when I was, imagine, 23, 24, man. Wow, right? So that's why I'm trying to share, right? To share like, yeah, man, you need to invest in yourself, but not this cliche investment or just buying clothes, just buying stuff. No, truly see yourself that you are the company. You are the asset. You, as an athlete, you are the, the, the yeah, the main thing that it needs to be reinvesting and you need to be, evolving year Expan by year expanding yeah. and evolving yeah. it's interesting beyond and i've dealt with a lot of personal brands yeah. in a traditional sense way back when with the, especially football baseball and um boxers but there's an idea of community that's different today yeah. now in soccer definitely especially premier league yeah. that's the biggest sporting community in the world and a lot of americans are starting to get a taste of, of the it. community. We've always yeah. had a taste of the sport. Yeah. Right? It's always been the fastest growing youth sport in America. Yeah, I agree. But now uh, it's on the community side 
uh, the fastest growing community in America. And having a personal brand with the size, scope and scale of the community available is truly an investment to make. Yeah. Does it ever become overwhelming with so many, because we're talking about billions of people now yeah. that are aware of who you are, not just Mexico, not Thank just Man City. Yeah, yes, you know. but it, it's it's overwhelming to me. Yeah, uh, and I'm not a brand the size of, of the greatest soccer yeah. player here in America. But is it overwhelming ever that so many people have access or awareness mm. of you? It was in the beginning. It was, of course, man. But that's where the mental and emotional work. Yeah, you need to put it like in practice. You know why? Because we all have one thing that is for sure that we're going to leave this simulation, universe, life, whatever you want to call it, right? So we don't have time, man. Like, like in Spanish, one good friend of mine told me this phrase, you're going to exist once. So like it's better that you squeeze out of it, right? So the mental and the emotional work that I've been putting is first of all, yeah, getting rid of the of other people's opinions, you know, in the way if if the opinion of anyone could help you take it, even if it's if it's not that positive, take it. Then secondly, it's like I came to this world to be me, regardless of. With all the respect, I'm not gonna step over anyone to become what I want to become, right? The other way around. I I would love to share it with people so we all can become this image that we have about ourselves. So when, when, when he started feeling very overwhelming and that work that I did, those two steps and the last step was, man, it doesn't matter how great, how good, how hard work you can do, you are not gonna create, and you're gonna make seven billion, eight, eight billion people in this universe to think in the same way, you know? Right. If, if, there, if Tom Brady has doubters, if Lionel Messi has doubters, if Cristiano Ronaldo has doubters, if LeBron let, let James me tell has you what doubters, I, I it's like, say, man. Gandhi. Exactly. Some, somebody hated Gandhi so much they Mandela, killed him. Mandela, man. <laughs> they, you know they Nelson Mandela Gandhi. and Gandhi, exactly. Like, how am I gonna compete with that? <laughs> exactly. So that, that, that small, dia, but the thing is that the attachment Help me be, first of all, knowing who I am. Because that's something when athletes, that's why they don't want to reinvest about, they don't want to see them as a company. They don't want to, uh, to detach of themselves is because, yeah, it's a crucial part of our lives because we, we utilize the sport to know about ourselves, to grow, to find discipline, to become a better version of ourselves. But we are more than that, man. We are more than that. And that's very difficult to realize because it's at the attachment of like, yeah, man, you can create a brand, you can create a character, you can create a, an athlete, but we are more than that. So that helped me so much to be more light and in peace than it's not about how, yeah, it's not about how good or how bad, or it's not about how, how, how much amount of things you can do. It's never going to be enough, David, yeah. never. There's always more zeros in the, in the back end counts Infinite. or in followers or in goals or in titles. There's always, even Michael Jordan, that we speak, he won six and we always can ask, yeah, the, the year that he retired, he could have won seven, right? Or, <laughs> right? There's never going to be enough, man. So that relaxation of like, Finding the, the consciousness about utilizing the competition just to be better and not to make myself feel better than any other human being. Because we all are different. We are living on our path. But yes, I utilize competition to become a better version of myself. And I love to compete even in, in board games with my sister. It's, it's, it's fun. It's the fun of, of, the, of, the, of the games, man. It's fun. That's why we watch. NFL, MLB, all the all the other sports that I'm that I'm not involved about. That's what we love because we don't know who's gonna win, and we see human beings push their lives so much to do some incredible things as an athlete. But then the result, we don't know what's gonna happen, David. We don't know. So that's the beauty of it. So as long as I said it, as long as you play the game but don't be part of it, that the attachment that I did, it took me. 30 years of my age. And that's why I think for you as well, like long age to realize, man. And that's why you become a very positive uh, uh, influence for all of us, David, is because you realize it that life is not about not playing the game. Yes, play the game, but don't be part of it. Yeah. Don't be part of it. That's so beautiful. And I can see you've done as much work 
on the field but off the field oh, you've man. you've had mentors <laughs> yeah. you, you you've read books i i yeah. know which ones as well i'm going to finish with you know more for the community because yeah. i'm sure they're all curious um i grew up in a generation when wayne gretzky made hockey Ooh. huge in america i even Beckham. know about him because he called how huge he was yeah, even and, that he's in a sport in mexico that we and don't now they're jealous because they, we, yeah. uh, we win all the stanley cups and then uh, obviously beckham came here and changed yeah. uh soccer forever in yeah. america and you then came and changed it even more now oh, the you, talk man. is of course messy yeah coming no, of course man. and uh you you played with him you you against know the him. skill against him yeah it was uh, a nightmare every single time <laughs> that that is an amazing uh person like you what do you think he's gonna do uh to the game here in america coming to miami a breakthrough man breakthrough breakthrough because like you said it the the impact that he's going to generate worldwide is going to be huge. And I think the MLS is going to be very grateful in that sense. Because I'm assuming, like, like we all should assume that he's going to do great in the field. Don't yeah. get me wrong. It's Lionel <laughs> Messi. You know, he's going to play in, in, in the league that, that we are part of it and in this country. But the, the, the impact, and you were speaking about culture and community. And I think those two things that takes more time to build and to yeah, to make foundations or roots, you know, in 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 every country, that's what you that's what soccer is still lacking in USA. But it just takes time, man. Yeah, this league has been around for twenty seven years, and the growth and and the development that they've shown, it's amazing, man. So I think Lionel Messi, like David Beckham, like Zlatan Ibrahimovic, like Pele in their in their times when he yeah. came as well in Cosmos, etc. It's a breakthrough, and the and and I think what what uh, MLS are doing pretty well is they're realizing a breakthrough is coming and they just try it's like it's, it's like driving a car they try to just steering in the best way possible to keep improving and keep increasing the the yeah the passion of this sport when i say the passion don't get me wrong there's a lot of, of american people that are passionate about it but you can still feel that usa that you can still that soccer is still not that rooted like the other sports, like you say, like like even hockey, yeah. hockey, MLB, NFL, and NBA, Big four. man, exactly. Messi is going to help to that. Because yeah. not only in the Latino community, then the USA people are going to start hearing that one of the greatest, greatest, greatest is in this league and you want to watch it. You want to see him while they're speaking about him. So that noise, that uh, impact, and that uh, narrative is going to be very good for for football, like I call it, because it's my yeah. sport, for football, uh, uh, soccer. Uh, it's going to help a lot to create that community more rooted, more deep in, in, in USA people. Well, you better get better soon because you're one of the few players in the MLS that are be able to compete with Messi <laughs> yeah, at his nice. level. Of course, of course not, not. You know, yeah. there's only a few on oh, earth, course, so sure. you're one of them. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Man. Um, it's incredible to see a great athlete and I'm blessed to be around so many that off the field has the same mindset, heart set and hand set because you're going to live a lot longer off the field than you will on Thank it. You, and the amount of kids that look up to you, to, you, to me, that means the most that we have iconic athletes that are great, kind, enlightened individuals that are here for the long run. And I can't see or wait to see what you do when you're my age, mm, the you. amount of children that you're going to impact to inspire them and say, hey, someday, I want to be better than Chacharito. No, so thank, thank you, you so much, my no, friend. No, I appreciate it a lot. Thank you for having me. And yes, man, it's it's very, yeah, it's incredible. Even just to finish with this, even myself, when I realized that doing what I love to do the most, that is playing soccer and even scoring goals, can impact in a very positive life. Imagine sharing our paths, sharing our struggles, sharing how we overcome and sharing just who we are the impact that we create and, and we can uh, uh, do, wow, it's it's a bless. And I feel very grateful I'm, I'm blessed, but don't get me wrong, being vulnerable, talking English, being next to a, a very, and very big, it was gonna say big, but huge positive influence like you, it's always very daring, but as well, it's very richful, you know? So thank you very much, David, for having me here. I feel very blessed, very grateful, and yeah, hopefully, this can we'll impact. More. It can impact. Yeah, it can impact the uh, positive youth in this world. Thank you, man. I guarantee it. 
Like I said, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. And nobody has a bigger fight in him than Chicharito. That's <laughs> right. You. Javier Hernandez, my man, you, man, local L.A. superstar. We can't wait to see him back on the field. But by the time he is, we'll spend much time off the field. Check him out. Follow him. This is David Meltzer once again delivering one of the greatest playbooks to success here at the greatest stadium ever created, SoFi Stadium.